even coming from Stafford, that feels different when he says the game. It's humbling at times. Uh, Peter, I know you're chomping at the bit to talk Rams, but Kyle, as someone who is uh, on the Lions uh, campaign this season in terms of what they brought to the table, but also putting it into fruition on Sunday night, they looked really strong. They look incredible. This was, this is, I hope you, everybody liked this game. I hope you're into it because this is my NFC title game. Mm. I think we're going to see this game again. I think I love both of these teams. And if you missed it, if you went to sleep, you didn't see the end of it, the overtime was an absolute display of power from the Lions. They were like, let's get the hell out of here. They win the toss, as I said. And then here's what happened in overtime. Run, 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 swing pass, run, run, run to the one-yard line. Rams call a timeout, give their defense a break. One yard run touchdown. It was unbelievable. Seven runs, one pass. They are so tough up front on offense, on defense. It's like every fitness influencer Peter's always telling you about. It's all about the core. You got to have core, core. I, I do bridge for 50 minutes after I wake up in the morning before I have my breakfast. They are strong in the core. That was the only pass they threw in overtime, the swing pass to Gibbs. The rest of the time was just Montgomery. It was Gibbs. It was everything you want. They're so tough. They're so strong in the core. They won this game because look at this. The Rams, there's nothing they could do here. They were exhausted. 99 wasn't on the field, and that was a wrap. I think these teams will play again, and I think it'll be in late January. Peter. I think that's my take. I came out of the show uh, after Thursday night's game and I said, yeah, the Chiefs won, but if you're a Ravens fan, you got to feel pretty good about your yeah. team. And I would love to see these teams play in January. I thought the Rams were awesome last night. I'm worried about the Rams this morning and we'll have Rappaport and Pelissero and Garofolo because it was like a mash unit, the amount of injuries mm -hmm. they had. And yet they somehow <laughs> found a way. They're down 17 to three in this game and they were on the road in a house of horrors. That place is absolutely nuts. And sure enough, they came back and they chipped away. And I'll tell you, the John Johnson interception yeah. at 17-13, it totally changed the vibe for this entire game. Here's Goff. He could put the game away. John Johnson jumps Amon Ra, picks him off, right? Total momentum swing in the Rams. This is after Puka got hurt. This is after half the offensive line has been off. And then it's this play right here. Kyle, you showed it in the highlights. Are you serious? Are you serious? Cooper Cup, who I put on my top five list of players that are much better than the experts have him in fantasy. He had 14 catches last night. All I heard out of Rams camp was how good Cup looks. But then the pass of the night. The pass of the night was not this one. It was the one that had Chris Collinsworth literally falling off of his chair. <laughs> Can we get the Demarcus Robinson pass? Here, I'm going to toss to Collinsworth and to Rico on this one. I'm going to ask the producers just to let the NBC voices take care of business. This is the pass right here. We don't have the sound, but I want you to see that. And I, well, it's week one. We'll get there, guys. Uh, yeah, we'll, I mean, it is regular right. season, though. It is regular season. <laughs> Let's go. Call to B. Call to B. Here we go, guys. Here's the sound. This may be the throw of the year right here. Watch this. Just watch Matthew Stafford here. How does he even see the guy down the field, much less falling backwards, fadeaway jumper, no look, whatever the heck that was, and complete that third down pass. That is redonkulous right there. <laughs> redonkulous. Redonkulous. Oh, wow. Collinsworth, Collinsworth, the first week into the longest week <laughs> season we've ever had is calling a pass in the fourth quarter the greatest pass we've seen all season. Okay, I'm just saying this. I loved this game last night. The Rams, they could hold their head high. They went into a house of horrors. Maybe the hardest place to play right now, and they hung. And the Lions, like Kyle said, found a way in overtime to just grind it out. Two great teams, two worthy competitors, and I would not be upset if we saw this exact same matchup again in January. Man, Peter, I'm right there with you. This one was really, really exciting watching them, you know, on the defensive side for, for the Rams. I loved watching their defensive line front. Keep an eye on this defense. That defense is going to be really good. But I, I want to go back to Detroit. They won this game and just something that popped out. We all were ready for Amon St. Brown to c continue what he did last season, and he's going to be exactly that. But the surprise to me was Jameson Will Williams and what he was able to produce. All the attention went over to St. Brown, and you need a guy like this who's going to be able to open things wide open. Here's a guy that can run 4-2-5, and his speed showed. The very first pass he caught, I'm like, whoa, what? Who is, who is this guy? Why is he running so fast? Um, you know, coming off of an injury, 
This return, I just love what he brings to this offense, the ability to stretch the field any defense. I'm telling you, defenses are going to have to be very concerned about this offense. I agree with you, Peter. I think we're going to see this matchup again. Two very good teams, but the Lions, the receiving core, mm -hmm. they're strong. Really strong. When you have Jared Goff looking as comfortable as he did at home, I think that is imperative for them moving forward. Jamison Williams has really been through it, too. Since he got drafted out of Alabama, he's had games he's missed, he's had injuries, and he's just trying to play up to the par of an Amon Ross St. Brown and the standard that he is trying to set. I go to the defensive side of the ball for Detroit. Was anybody more ready for week one to start than Alex Anzalone? He looked like he was shot out of a cannon when this game True. started on Sunday Night Football. I swear I had barely sat back down from the five-minute break between, that we had between the 4 o'clock games ending and this one where I was Anzalone, tackle for loss. Another play. Anzalone, tackle for loss. He was all over the field. He had a crazy stat line, 10-plus tackles, three tackles for loss. He looked amazing in his Fourth year with the Lions. Uh, I know Manti Teo will be in here later. These guys are really close. They play with the same ferocious nature uh, now that we've gotten to know Manti a little bit better. But I thought Alex Anzalone looked absolutely tremendous, Peter. I know in this defense, the backbone of Aiden Hutchinson being up front and Alex, the threat of Alex Anzalone coming off the side, must have been nightmarish for Matt Stafford at times. Well, they also had injuries on the offensive line. So you saw a new center out there. They were center, and Anzalone was all over the place. But you said it. Aiden Hutchinson was unblockable at points in this game. Up and down this field, the, the Rams were able to move on these guys in the fourth quarter. But early on, those, those Lions players were on fire on defense. And you could tell the crowd lifted them up. Uh, gosh, Stafford took a beating last night, mm -hmm. an absolute beating. And he did that again after the wild card round where he did the same thing. This Lions defense is punishing. And Aaron Glenn had these guys on all, uh, just working on all cylinders. We're hyping the Lions really hard, but we're forgetting, guys, we're, we're getting ready for a Viking Saints NFC title game this year after yesterday. <laughs> yes, so let's not sleep on any of those teams. Come no, on now. Don't do that, no, don't. Kyle. Don't do that.